intro to a short assortment of topics and definitions. This video is meant to serve more as a brief introduction to several topics rather than an in-depth discussion of any. We'll discuss basic definitions of the orbital concept, shielding and penetration, and diamagnetism and paramagnetism. There is more to where electrons are located than simply energy shells. There are also subshells and orbitals. Electrons do not simply orbit the nuclei as these small little items going in a circle. Instead, they form delocalized clouds of electron density. These are called orbitals and take on particular shapes based on their wave functions. The ones that I've shown here are the s orbital in blue and the three p orbitals in pink. Each orbital has a shape, each p orbital has the shape of two balloons tied together, but there are three of them, one for each axis. We'll get into these orbitals in far more details in later videos, where we'll also introduce d and f orbitals. Energy levels in orbitals are different distances from the nuclei. Because orbitals are clouds of electron density, the probability density changes depending on where you are. The pictures that I showed you in the last slide of the orbitals are showing you the place where about 95% of the electrons are likely to be within. However, we can graph this probability more correctly as well. Here in this graph, I have the radial probability graphs of the first three s orbitals. This shows the distance from the nuclei that the electrons in the orbital are located. You can see that there is a ha the higher in energy that you go, the further away most of the electron density is. So for instance, the 3s orbital, most of the energy is much further away than the 1s orbital, which is much closer to the nuclei. This shows us that lower energy levels are what we would call more penetrating, or they are closer to the nucleus. We can also see here that in between the 2s orbital and the nuclei are located the majority of the 1s electrons. So here we have most of the 2s density, and in between the 2s and the nuclei is most of the 1s. This means that the 1s electrons are going to be blocking the 2s electrons from feeling the nuclear charge as much. This concept is called shielding. We'll extend this out to p and d orbitals in later videos as well. Shielding will become an extremely important topic when we start discussing periodic trends. Let's look at an analogy that a student and I developed together to help make this definition more memorable. Imagine you are at a concert and you're in the very first row. You have a great view of what's happening and you can see every moment and you're greatly attracted to the stage. This is like being an electron in the first energy level. Your seat or the first energy level is the most penetrating. Now imagine being halfway back. The people in front of you are in your way, yet you can still feel a pull of the stage, yet you're shielded from the stage. Now imagine you're way in the very back of the audience of a very large concert. You are the most shielded from the stage. There is a lot of people in between where you're sitting and the stage. You're only slightly attracted to the concert because you're so far away that you can't even see what's happening very well. So you're not feeling that pull of the concert drawing you in. This is like being an electron in the outermost energy of a large atom. It is very shielded and not very penetrating. Let's talk about a couple more definitions that we need to discuss. We haven't yet discussed energy levels and what energy level is how far from the nuclei when it comes to the p orbitals, but just bear with me for a little bit on this so that we can talk about paramagnetic and diamagnetic, and we'll get to the rest of this soon. Of course, you are not responsible for knowing how to make these electron energy level diagrams until we cover that in, in the video and in class, which will be coming up very soon. All right. Atoms that have unpaired electrons have different properties than those that have paired electrons. We define those with unpaired electrons as paramagnetic and those with paired electrons as diamagnetic. And so when we get into making these diagrams, whenever you have unpaired electrons, those are paramagnetic and paired electrons are diamagnetic. And for those who are, of you who are currently frustrated with the nomenclature there, you're not alone. However, Sadly, I don't have the power to change how these are named. Now that we have some definitions out of the way, we'll be able to discuss electron configurations and periodic trends in more detail. After watching this video, you should have a very introductory level 
understanding of the orbital concept. You should actually understand shielding and penetration relatively well, but perhaps not know which ordering the orbitals go in. That'll be discussed later. And now you know what diamagnetism, diamagnetism and paramagnetism is, so that once we teach you how to draw electron energy diagrams and do electron configurations, you can apply these definitions.